Hello everyone, and today we're going to be forming a coin flesh that starts off with this nasty blue, and then little by little starts getting purified till it's clear, and we're going to be changing out with this nice Presto and Platinum Antifreeze, and we're going to use the flush with the distilled water and this funnel kit. So, let's get started. And the reason we're changing this out today, for the first interval, you're supposed to change it out after 105,000 miles or the first 84 months. And since this is a 2015 and the coolant looks a little rough, I think it's time to go ahead and change this out. Also, we did check with the dealership. They're going to charge about $220 for this flush. So we're going to go ahead and do it ourselves. And the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and slide in our vehicle, go ahead and turn it on, and then set the heat to max, and then we'll set the fan on high. The whole idea is we want to open up the heater core because we're going to flush this out as well. And after about 10 seconds, that should be enough. Let's go ahead and shut off the vehicle. And of course, safety first. We always want to make sure the engine is cool. So we're putting our hand on the radiator cap just to make sure it's cool to the touch. And now we can go ahead and move our way to the reservoir. And let's see if I can get a good angle. Uh, nope, let me see if I can move this side. There we go. So that bolt right there, that's all we need to remove. That's all it's holding down this reservoir. So this is going to make it really easy. So all we're going to need is a 10 millimeter socket and socket wrench. And we're going to go ahead and unbolt this thing and lift it up so we can go ahead and drain it out. And after a few turns, almost there, there we go. And get my finger in there so I don't drop it. And there we go. And taking it out, it's nothing to it. It's just that little bolt right there. And since I'm lazy, I'm going to put my drain pan right next to the reservoir so I don't really have to do much. So I'm going to go ahead and lift it out. Just got a little finagle in that one little area. And there we go. And we'll just go ahead and pull the hose out of these clips. And let's do one more. There we go. Eh, not too shabby. Now let's go ahead and undo the cap and go ahead and dump it all out right in this pan. And you just got to go ahead and shake it out. Make sure you get all the angles because there are a few pockets in there. And that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and put the cap back on. And go ahead and set the reservoir right back in its place. We're not going to bolt it down. We're just going to go ahead and set it there because we're going to go ahead and do this a few times with distilled water. And I'll go ahead and leave the cap right on it. I'm not going to go ahead and tighten it up. And now that the reservoir is empty, let's work our way to the radiator. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the radiator cap. And of course, you're always going to see me check to make sure it's cool. And the whole idea is we want to allow airflow to go in the radiator so it drains a lot quicker and more efficient. And I'm going to try to take this cap off without making too much of a mess. Yep, looks pretty good. Next, let's go ahead and shimmy under the vehicle. See if we can get a good position because we need to head for that opening right there. And I'm kind of showing you this now because I won't be able to show it to you later as I'm removing this drain plug. And right, yep, I think that's good lighting. So right there, that's the drain plug. It's very inexpensive and it comes out very easily. So that's where a lot of our time is going to be spent removing all the fluid and the still water from the system. Now for the start, we're going to go ahead and use the green drain pan. However, you can go ahead and use these aluminum drain pans if you like. They're actually really cheap as well as it's really easy to use because they're kind of lower to the ground. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and use the green one just to get a measurement of how much comes out of the radiator. So let's go ahead and take our Phillips screwdriver and I'm going to go ahead and remove that drain plug and it comes out very easily. So go ahead and very slowly start unscrewing it and it only has a few threads so this won't take much. And almost there. I'm going very gently because I'm going to Try to do this very quickly. Oh, a little bit of water coming out, and there it goes. And I'm gonna go ahead and let that drain. And I got a little bit of water on my camera. And let me go ahead and grab a microfiber cloth. See about cleaning this up real quick. There we go. That looks a lot better. And this is probably the most time-consuming step of this whole process is letting this drain out because it does take a little bit. Eventually. And after about 10 to 15 minutes, it looks like we got a few dribbles. I think that's a pretty good stopping point. So I'm going to put the aluminum drain pan there for now. And let's go ahead and reinstall that same drain plug. Now I'm going to use the same one over and over until the very end. So just keep that in mind. And I'm just going to go ahead and snug it up. Don't need to over tighten this at all. And that's pretty good right there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our drain pan. Obviously it looks pretty rough, but we need to look at the measurements. So let's see if I can get my camera in there so you can get it focused in. And... Yep, so right there we have 15, 10, and it looks like we're right at 5 quarts. That's awesome. And I'll explain that a little bit more later on. But let's go ahead and flush out the system using some distilled water. And you can get this from your local store. And we got a nice little funnel kit we got online. It works really well and it makes this job really easy. So let's go ahead and start with the reservoir. I'm going to take that cap off. I'm going to go ahead and put the funnel in there. You can use any funnel you like. I just prefer this one since I already bought it. And let's go ahead and add some distilled water in there. And I'm going to add a nice hefty amount just to help rinse it out. I don't really have a specific measurement in there. All right, that was easy. And I'll just go ahead and place the cap right back on. And that same funnel kit came with these green fittings, which fit perfectly in our Nissan Ultima. And it goes in that same position where that radiator cap was. So we'll go ahead and put those right on, tighten it up, nice and snug. And we'll take that same funnel and it slides right in. It actually stiffens it up and makes it easy to pour. 
So now let's go ahead and do the same thing. We'll fill this up with the distilled water and we're gonna make sure this is completely topped off and it's gonna take about a gallon. And it looks like we don't have any more air bubbles coming out, so it's gonna put the plug in there. Go ahead and pull this funnel right out. And eh, not too much spillage. Go ahead and set that aside. Take that same green fittings off. And try to do it too much without dropping it. And yep, that was pretty easy. So now let's go ahead and reinstall that same radiator cap. Make sure it's nice and snug. Beautiful. Go back in the vehicle and let's go ahead and warm it up. And this is the part that's also time consuming, but it's pretty easy. So we're gonna turn it on. And we're gonna go ahead and verify the heater's on. Yep, it's right where we left it, so that's good. Yep, on max. And our goal is to get this to normal operating temperatures, which is about a third of the way up on this gauge. And once we got there, we're gonna go ahead and hit the accelerator three times. So there's one, let's see if we can get another one. That's two. And one more for good luck. There's three. And after we let that settle down, we'll go ahead and turn off the vehicle. Eventually. And after waiting about 10 to 15 minutes, it does feel like the radiator cooled down quite a bit. Yep, cap feels pretty cool to the touch. Now it was a little nippy outside when I started, so this kind of helped. So let's go ahead and start with the reservoir again. Remove the cap, and we're gonna do the same process all over again. We're gonna drain the whole system and refill it multiple times with distilled water. And obviously the more times you do this, the more clear the liquid's gonna get and the cleaner your system's gonna be. So if you look at the reservoir, this is the easiest thing to clean. You can see the liquid's already looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna do this multiple times just cause water's cheap. So I put the reservoir back and then I work my way back to the same radiator cap. And I'm always very cautious when I take the cap off even though I checked it multiple times just cause of you know old habits. And of course, starting to look pretty good. Got a little bit of water there, that's a good sign. And I'll set that aside and we'll go under the vehicle and just drain it out. Again, this is gonna be the exact same process as earlier. Now you're gonna notice the liquid's gonna get a little bit better as time goes on. And there goes our second drain right there. And I'm gonna take a sample, that way we can go ahead and track our progress, that way you can see what I see. Now of course we'll go ahead and refill it with some distilled water, get all the air bubbles out of the system. Then you'll warm up the vehicle, cool it down, drain again, and keep repeating. And as you can see, I'm taking samples for every time I do this. And these samples just keep coming out better and better. Look at that one, that one's clear. And looking at our drain pan, you can see all the crud that came out. Yeah, it's probably good we did several flushes just to make sure this thing's nice and clean. And since our last drain came out clear, let's go ahead and install our brand new drain plug. You don't ever want to use the old one, you always want to buy a brand new one. These are also very inexpensive. So let's go ahead and get that on there, make sure we don't cross thread it, and we'll get it nice and tight at 35 inch pounds by using our calibrated arm. Go ahead and wipe everything down, we just want to make sure everything's nice and clean. This will also help us check for leaks later on. And... That actually came out pretty dry, that's a good sign. And it looks like we're on the downhill slope, so now we can go ahead and reinstall our reservoir tank. We're gonna use that same 10 millimeter socket and socket wrench and reinstall that one bolt. And we'll get it nice and snug. Feels pretty good right there. And let me pick up the camera, move it around, and let's go ahead and put this hose right back in its clips. So there's one, there's two, there's three. And now let's go ahead and grab our antifreeze concentrate Go ahead and turn it over and we're gonna check out one label and see if I could zoom in a little bit. Now on this vehicle, we had the blue Nissan coolant come out of this, but this stuff is gonna be like a yellow greenish tint, but don't worry, it is still compatible with this Nissan Ultima. And we'll go ahead and start with the reservoir and I'll take that same funnel we used from earlier. Go ahead and take that plug out and then we'll go ahead and grab our coolant concentrate and we wanna fill the reservoir about half. It's gonna be a ballpark, it's not gonna be exact. And yeah, it looks pretty good. Now I'll take some distilled water and go ahead and fill that up all the way to the max line. And eh, a little bit more. Yeah, that's about right. And we'll go ahead and put that plug back in, remove the funnel, bring my camera in. And as you can see it, yep, it's got a nice little green yellow tint to it, not too bad. Now see if I can get a side view. I want to show you where I filled this all the way up at. And and I think that's the best camera angle we're gonna get. And we filled it up right there, which looks pretty good. And using that same green fitting from earlier, we'll go ahead and install that around the top of the radiator. And see if we can get that nice and snug. Yeah, that feels pretty good. We'll go ahead and grab that funnel, go ahead and install that. Make sure that's not going anywhere. 
remove that plug. And earlier when I mentioned it was great that we had five quarts come out of the system, it's because this concentrate is not your typical 50-50 mix. This is actually a 56-44 mix, which means it's good that we get a little bit more than half in the system. So by removing five quarts of coolant, we can go ahead and replace it with five quarts of concentrate, which means it's gonna give us about a 58% mix, which is not bad. Again, this is all ballpark. And it looks like we got a majority of the system filled. So let's go ahead and run the vehicle. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. And it looks like everything looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead and top off the radiator. We wanna make sure there's plenty of coolant in there. We don't wanna cause any air bubbles. So I'm gonna put a little excess amount right in this funnel. And as the vehicle's running, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze the upper radiator hose. And you're gonna see a few air bubbles come out of the funnel. The whole idea is we wanna make sure there's no air left in the system. So you're gonna let this run for quite a while while squeezing that upper radiator hose. And just like earlier, we'll go ahead and hit the accelerator. So there's one, let's go ahead and do one more. And there we go. And now help push any air bubbles out of the system because it's gonna release air at the highest point, which is where our funnel's at. 20 minutes later. And it looks like all the air bubbles are out, so let's go ahead and shut off the vehicle. Much, much later. And after letting the engine cool down, let's go ahead and remove the funnel. So I'm gonna put the plug in, lift up the funnel, and try not to make too much of a mess. And I'll go ahead and grab a towel, that way I can clean up a little bit. And let's go ahead and remove this green fitting. See if I can get it in one shot. And, all right, a few drips, not too bad. And we'll go ahead and set that aside. Clean up a little bit more. And I'll go ahead and bring the camera in. And look at that. Nice clean color, looks really good. That's exactly what we want. And since it looks like our coolant is topped off, let's go ahead and reinstall our radiator cap. And one more twist. Very nice. Now let's go for a test drive. And we're gonna go ahead and drive this around just for a while. We're gonna check temperatures, make sure nothing goes out of the ordinary. So far it looks pretty good, and I also gotta go get gas. And it looked like everything turned out great. Now we need to dispose of our old antifreeze. So I'm gonna take everything in the drain pan and put it in our old containers. And since I have these one gallon jugs, these work out perfectly. And I'm trying to do it without spilling anything. And it looks like that one came out pretty good. So hey, we're off to a good start. And I'm gonna go ahead and cap that off and I'm gonna do the same thing for the remaining coolant. And once I was able to place everything in jugs, I went to my local waste management location and they were able to take all my household hazards. So I had some brake fluid left over, some oil, as well as all this antifreeze. So you're able to drop this off, and for my area, it's free of charge, and it was just that easy. One pair of pants later. So after running the vehicle for about a day, I just want to go ahead and perform a test right on the coin just to see how well we did the mix. So let's go ahead and remove the radiator cap, and I have this nice tester I got online. And we'll go ahead and start by squeezing the bulb, get all the air out of it. Go ahead and stick the hose right inside the radiator. And see if we go ahead and get all this coolant right in this tester. We want to go ahead and fill the whole thing up. Go ahead and plug the end of the hose, bend it over, and let me see if I can bring in a little bit so we can get a better look at this. And trying to get a good camera angle, let me go ahead and zoom in. And right there, we're just a hair below 129 degrees Celsius for the boiling point. That's a great sign. We want 129 even, but that's really good. That's close enough, definitely for this. So let's go ahead and flip it over. This is probably more important in my area. And same thing, get a good lighting. So right there, bringing it in. And it looks like we're right at negative 37 degrees Celsius. That is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now let's go ahead and return that coolant right back in the radiator. I'm going to try to do it without spilling too much. So put the hose in there, squeeze on that bulb. And yeah, just a little bit more. Get, make sure we get all the fluid out of there. I want this thing clean as it can be. And that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and install our radiator cap. And overall, this job turned out awesome. It was very easy to accomplish. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe.